there, my friend, and welcome to Easy Lazy Guitar Theory Course. This is Paul Trajano. Let me extend to you my virtual handshake. I'm so happy that you're here. It's nice to meet you. I'm currently here recording in my bedroom, and it's quite drizzling outside. Anyway, as much as I'd like to talk about myself today, uh, I'd like to go straight ahead to what you're about to get in this episode 1 of Easy Lazy Guitar Theory course. In section 1, what you're going to get is the basics that matter. So we're going to talk a little bit about our language as musicians or as guitarists so that along the course, we will understand each other better. Also, I will be showing you this one cool video that I found from a BBC documentary. It's just a short video that talks about more on this topic. Also, I'll be sharing to you how you can visualize music. As you know, we cannot really see music, but as humans, we are visual people. And one of the best ways for us to learn is through visualization. So in this episode, I'll be sharing to you how you can visualize music so you can learn about uh, music theory easier. And in section 2, we're going to learn about the importance of the numbers 12 and 7 in your music. And this is a very exciting topic because 90% of the self-taught musicians that are just starting out will be surprised at how this would really affect their music. And frankly, I showed this off while I was starting out before and it's just amazing that finally I came to a point that, you know, I really had to learn this and I'm glad I did. Finally, on section 3, this is one of the exciting part of this video, is I'll be sharing one simple fretboard hack. Now this simple fretboard hack will help you find a note that will fit something that's playing in the background. For example, you'll be playing by ear or you'll be tra uh, transcribing. You can use this simple fretboard hack to easily do that. Also, you can use this for improvisation and band jamming. Uh, these are just the things that's popping out of my mind right now, but I'm sure you'll find more applications for this little fretboard hack, so watch out for that in a little bit later. Now, for better result, I'd recommend that you print the PDF that I've included in this page. I hope you're watching this online. Somewhere in this page is a download link for a PDF, so please print that so you can follow along because I'll be showing screenshots of the PDF as we go along the way. And now, before we begin with the lesson proper, I'd just like to give you a little disclaimer. Well, I want to tell you straight, I'm not an effing rock star, okay? I'm not a university instructor or some big shot boy in the music industry. I'm just a regular guy who happened to love playing guitar and share what I know about it to other people. In fact, the reason why I created this course was because I cannot understand their language. I just thought that too much stuff and too much notes and too much things to memorize is just too much work for me. And not that those guys, those hotshots or university instructor guys are bad. It's just that I'm not that talented to get what they're saying. And because out of necessity, I had to develop some easy lazy way to study guitar theory. So what I did was create my own course, create something that I would use myself. And the good thing was, it has helped me a lot. Also, I want to tell you that I'm not the best guitarist out there but I'm sure I'm most grateful for making this information available to you. This is because I just feel lucky that when I was starting out, I got to be surrounded by cool people, cool musicians, ranging from people playing in local bands professionally, to people who are touring, to people who are involved in big productions like musical directors. I have these friends who guided me along the way, and that started my journey. Now. What you're about to discover in this course are the same secrets that help me play live in radio, play live in the television, also play in front of people in football fields. And now the interesting thing is, because of this, I made friends with a lot of cool people too, you know? I played with some awesome musicians and that's just the things that 
it's really really rewarding when it comes to playing guitar. This very same secret song also helped me write my own song and get it recorded with my band and get it played in the radio. I'm telling this not to brag but just to paint you a little picture of what this course can do for you too. And now for the main meat of our course, Paradise One, Basics That Matter, Music Defined. Now as you can see here, we've included the definition from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And if you're interested in looking at that definition, you can just refer to your PDF. Let us look at how music is defined in this book. Music is an auditory science and art which uses well-ordered sounds and their combination that moves through time. Okay? What that simply means is that, let's say this is sound, there's another sound, there's another sound, and it says their combination, so probably there are few sounds here that are happening together, so they're combined. And it says that well ordered, so this can be well ordered sounds, you just imagine it. And it says that they move through time, okay? Now, this will make sense a little bit later what this means, but as you can see, these are, you can just imagine it, these are ordered sounds that move through time. And it says here that. It synergizes with the beauty of form, feeling of emotional intensity that tells of every human experience, existence, and society. Now, I'd also like to share to you my personal take on what music really is. Music for me is a gift from heaven, whether on the creator's side or the listener's side. Music is used to relate something that's inside us, that's, that's within us. Then we just exchange that outside with artistic approach along natural scientific rules. So as you can see in a video that I'll be sharing later, there's this natural scientific rules that I'm talking about. It is a phenomenon so vast and expressive, too noble and elusive that I must ask forgiveness for I can't find words to fully describe it with just bearing and confinement but i think music is a language that is very forgiving and universal that transcends race vocabulary age and philosophy which makes it the most beautiful language there is whether my definition be right or wrong i don't know what is music i still don't know but let us still explore music in its totality has three main elements Anytime you play something on your guitar or listening to a song, you will surely always encounter one or more of these elements. First, rhythm. Rhythm is defined as the movement in musical time with periodical recurrence of accent. Simply, rhythm is the timing of the notes that you are playing. The tick and the tock, the one, two, three, clap, one, two, three, clap, etc. It's just simply the movement. Now, let us look at harmony. In music, harmony manifests itself as a pleasing sensation in the listener as he or she hears one or more sounds. The basic guitar chords that we play are composed of notes that are in harmony. Basically, power chords would compose of two notes and regular chords would compose of three notes and above. Okay, a guitar solo playing over some bass would also would also be considered in harmony if they are blending beautifully together. You could add as many instruments as you like, and if they sound pleasing to the ears together, then we consider that they are in harmony. Now, melody. Melody is a rhythmical succession of single tones with the most parts belonging to a given key that are so related together as to form a musical thought at once pleasing to the ear. Try this. Hum the first song that comes into your mind. And probably you've heard Happy Birthday, Baba Black Sheep, ABCD, the alphabet song, whatever. That 
is an example of melody. Remember how we defined music a while ago, right? You have sounds that are well ordered. Now let us look at the video clip that I was talking about a while ago. The Greek philosophers were forever trying to find out the one thing that everything is made of. One philosopher said everything's made of fire, another air, another water. Pythagoras said that everything was made of numbers, including music. To find out what Pythagoras meant, I've come to the Walter Perry Garden Centre in Oxfordshire. Oh, thank you very much. All I need now is a mathematician. Oh, I'm a mathematician. Oh, what a bit of luck. <laughs> But if you want to find out about Pythagoras, music and maths, we're going to need some pots of rather different sizes. Oh, uh, oh good lord. Perfect. <laughs> Pythagoras wanted to understand why certain combinations of notes sounded so beautiful and harmonious. So if we play a pot, we get a note. La. But if I combine it with the note of this pot, la. It's rather a bad combination. Let's listen to them together. Oh, yes, no, that doesn't work at all, does it? But if I play this pot here, la, la, that's a beautiful combination. Let's hear them together. But why is it such a beautiful combination? And the answer is mathematics. The relationship between the weights of these pots is in a perfect one to two relationship. And it's that combination of whole numbers which makes this such a nice sound. As opposed to the first pot, this is sort of a 1 to 1.264, not, not a nice whole number relationship, which is causing the bad sound. So Pythagoras is saying that the harmonies are combinations of whole numbers. That's right. N numbers that are collections of ones. Pythagoras realised that these whole numbers are really why things sound so beautiful. And it excited him so much, he realised that really mathematics was the, was the base of everything. That it would explain musical harmony and the cosmos. And this is why he coined the phrase, the music of the spheres. So, shall we? Oh, I don't see why not, yes. If the beauty of music relied on whole numbers, Pythagoras reckoned, so too must everything. All right, all right, all right. I hope you enjoyed that video there. And uh, now, we're going to answer why the number 12 is important in music. To understand this better, we have to consider that in Western music, we only have 12 sounds. And what do you do with those 12 sounds is you pick some of those and you just combine them and you produce good music. Just like the alphabet, right? We have 28 letters and you combine letters to form words. Remember the time when we were just starting out to learn how to spell? We started with dog, cat, those easy words, and then from easy words we moved on to longer words, and from words we started to create sentences. Just like in music, from single sounds you combine them and you create chords, and you combine one chord to the next chord, and you'll have a chord progression, and you string one chord progression to another, and you'll get a song. And you can also have one sound coming after another sound, so you'll have a melody. Now, just like the ABC, or alphabet, you just don't mix letters randomly, or you'll end up with gibberish. Just like music, you don't just combine the 12 sounds randomly, or you'll end up with trash noise most probably. But here's the interesting thing about these 12 sounds. They also work like the primary colors. Now remember that we only have three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. And what happens is if we combine them together, they can produce different colors. And as we know, these are not the only colors that can come out out of these three primary colors. Now we can change their how strong the blue is, how light the red is, and you'll have a different tone of violet. That's also true about these 12 sounds in our Western music. What happens is different combinations 
of these sounds would produce different kinds of feelings, different colors. And that's very, very exciting to look at. Here we go. As promised, I will show you how to visualize music. As you know, music is translated through our ears. That is, in the simplest idea, we can't see it. But for the purpose of easier instruction, let us just imagine that music is made up of 12 equally divided blocks, each block representing a musical tone. Now let's take a look at a very important word you'll often be encountering. And this is the word interval. What interval really means is the distance between two notes. Now, as we've said before, we will be imagining that one block will represent one tone, okay? Now, half-step interval, also known as semitone, would refer to a small interval from one note to the next closest note, higher or lower. What that means is, half-step would mean the distance between note number one and note number two. Now, whole step interval would refer to a musical interval of two half step intervals. So, from note number nine to note number ten, that would be one half step, right? And from ten to eleven would be another half step. So, if we combine both, nine from nine to eleven will have what we call a whole step interval. On the guitar, the half step and the whole step interval would look like this. Half step would look like from one fret to another, and you consider that a half step. Also, from an open string, a string that you don't press, to the first fret is also considered a half step. And the whole step would look like this. From this fret, you just keep one fret. And there you have it. That is considered a whole step. Now, here is an interesting fact. If you use half step, half step, half step, half step, half step, up until the 12th fret, what you'll have is a chromatic scale. Okay? Now, if you do whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and whole step, what you have is a Full step scale. And that's just something that you'd want to keep in your bank. Like we've said earlier, music is composed of only 12 tones or sounds or notes. Now, here's the important thing that we must understand 7 out of the 12 tones have been given major significance. They are the 7 major tones. And the seven major tones acts as the backbone from which almost everything that has something to do with melody and harmony in music expands from. It's like this is the seven major tones, okay? And harmony and melody just expands from it. Like that. Like magnets. So, how important is this? Grasping this thoroughly is the secret to understanding the mysteries of chord formation, chord progression, scale derivation modes, and a lot more very easily. This may not make so much sense right now, but along the way you'll understand more about these words like chord formation and chord progressions, etc. Anyway, just like we've said also a while ago, we just don't mix up tones or sounds randomly or we just end up with trash. So the first thing that we must do is we locate which of the 12 tones consists the major 7. Let's see here. We have 12 blocks as usual. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, and now the 12 blocks would just repeat itself like a never-ending loop, but we always count up to 12 blocks because that's the only number of sounds we have. Now, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, these numbered blocks will represent the 7 major tones. And did you know that the do re mi we've been singing since childhood are actually the 7 major tones? 
Now, that would help you is understand easier why these seven major tones are very important. Because as a child, we remember the most basic of sounds. And that's just a proof that the most basic of sounds consist of the strongest foundation of music. Okay? Here's just a little side note. If there are only seven major tones, then what are the blocks eight, nine, and so on four? So this question is referring to this block eight and nine and ten, eleven, twelve, and so on. Now, blocks eight and nine will show us the octave relationship, which simply means that blocks one and eight are technically just the same notes, only that eight is a higher pitch version of one. So, like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. If you count here, like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. It's the same. That is why when singing do, re, mi, you end up with another do, but this time a higher do, right? Now, that is called the octave. An octave is defined as two pitches with the same name located 12 half steps apart. So if you count this from 1 to this block, that would be of 12 spaces. I mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 before you reach the octave. So these are the octave 1 and 8. The same applies to 2 and 9, 3 and 10, 5 and 11. So, the 2 and 9, 3 and 10, and so on. Now, let's move on. On the guitar, how would that look like? Simple and easy. Let's say this is C or 1. Now, as we move along, this 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, those are the major tones out of the 12. Now if you're fairly new to music theory, don't worry, this is a topic that will come to you naturally. Just hang in there if you're new to this and you'll soon get this. Okay, here's an important note. The seven major tones were not just randomly picked out of thin air, okay? Their positions are actually derived from half steps and whole steps combination in a specific formula. Remember intervals? Yes, that's what we're talking about when we say a specific combination of half step and whole steps. So this is it. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So right here, from number one, we have a whole step, then another whole step, and a half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and a half step and the cycle goes on and on and on now here's the important truth the seven major tones in this formula is actually the major scale okay you'll often hear major scale when you go to band sessions and music schools understand how the major scale works in and out and tasks like analyzing songs and licks becomes a piece of cake now here's the golden rule you can't dive into deeper theory without first laying a very thorough knowledge of the major scale. That's how important this lesson is, this major scale we're getting. And the first step is hard coding the formula into your mind. We will be discussing these topics on our next episode. And now I'd like to leave you with the simple guitar fretboard hack. I'm very excited to share this secret to you because it's very very powerful and here we go the simple fretboard hack that I'm talking about now what this will allow you is to easily land on the right notes of the major scale using the half step intervals of a scale okay the key here is you'll be using the half step intervals of a scale as a guide now, remember a while ago, we used this example as the major scale, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 1 and 8 are actually the same notes. It will just seem that 8 is on a higher register. Alright, 
Now, here's the important part. There are only two half step intervals in a major scale, okay? And because you can derive other scales from the major scale, it's also the same. There are only two half step intervals in this kind of normal scales. Anywhere and whichever string on the guitar. So, what does that mean? Before and after these intervals, you see, there will always be two full steps before and two after every half step interval that you have. So, let's see. In here, you'll have two, one, two, and here, you'll have one. To. Let's say you can still see the fretboard here. So what this simply means is that whenever you find this, you can just simply go two whole steps back and two whole steps forward. Simple as that. And that's it. Again, the trick is to visually mark where the half step intervals are placed over the fretboard. When you find them, you just mark them visually and then instantly visualize two notes that are whole step intervals apart from both sides of your mark. So two notes. One full step, two full step, one full step, two full step, and that's it. This is a very convenient way to visualize and memorize the major scale over the fretboard. Try this with tapping technique and enjoy. Actually, you can check tapping videos from YouTube. But if you're just starting out, there are other ways to use this technique and we will talk more about this on the upcoming episode. So before we go, I'd just like to tell you something important. If you like this guide and you're interested in getting the whole ebook complete, we're actually selling it for $49.95 outside. But now that you're a subscriber, you're getting this. $30 gift certificate. So what is this for? If you want to purchase David Slingshot's Guitar Theory, so that's where everything I just taught you came from, you can get it for $19.95 only, and that's because of that $30 gift certificate you're getting because you're now a subscriber. Also, you're getting a $27 value bonus. This is Guitar Hero Limit Zero series simple jam tracks. This contains 24 backing tracks, yours for free. So if you're interested, you can go to guitarherolimitzero.com/slingshottheory. Please don't share this URL to other people because you're getting this because you are my subscriber. Now. For the upcoming week, we will be looking at this. See? For the upcoming week, just some fast, dizzy, fast look. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comment form or comment box on this page, and we will try to answer them as soon as possible. And please check your email inbox after three days I'll be sending you episode two so until then please share the love if you like this tutorial please share guitar hero limit zero dot com slash free theory your friends again guitar hero limit zero dot com slash free theory see you in three days and until then you can watch this video over and over again and review your PDF file.